بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الأمين كلية السلام العلوم والتكنولوجيا قسم الهندسة الميكانيكية تخصص قدرة الكورس نم الكورس كود قدر 4106 رياسات ميكانيكية ميكانيكال ميجرمنتس ناو تودايز لكشر إز لكشر نمبر 6 and it is regarding القدم ذات الورانية or the vernier caliber Now today's class is about linear measurements. Now measuring instruments are designed either for line or linear measurements. Example, steel rule or vernier caliber, or for end measurements in order to measure the distance between two surfaces using an instrument. Now calibers and devices, which are also linear measurement devices. Are basically dimension transfer instruments. Now, in this case, what we are doing is that we use the caliber or a divider in order to uh, specify the distance between any two surfaces or any two points, and then take the dimension by using a steel rule or by using any other suitable uh, measuring devices. So, in themselves, they are not uh, measuring devices as they are uh, transfer. instruments now the first encounter of all of us regarding a measure a measuring device is actually the steel rule the simple steel rule or a tape measurement maybe even before the school days now engineers nowadays have a wide range they have a wide range of instruments from purely mechanically operated to digital electronic instruments Now, all you need to consider is the application which you are going to use the instrument for and the cost of the measurement, okay? In order to decide which is the best application, which is the best instrument for your application. Now, linear measurement instruments have to be designed to meet uh, inflexible demands in the sense that high accuracy and high precision is required or different accuracies and different precisions are being dealt with at the same time the instrument have to has to be simple to operate and of low price to make economic uh, sense for the user because as we always say economy and engineering always go together now a scaled instruments if we started with The instrument which we see in front of us in the diagram, that is the depth gauge. Now, rules are usually are useful for many shop floor instruments. However, measurement of certain components require some mechanical way to either hold the measuring device gradually against the component being you being measured or capture the reading because. It's not always easy to use the rule in order to measure the two points which you want to measure. So sometimes you need an instrument which can uh, hold the component which you want to measure. Now, another important advantage of a scaled instrument is that the least count of measurement can be improved greatly compared to a normal steel rule because in the normal steel rule we may have only one millimeter as the, the the smallest if you like or the least count of measurement and in uh, nowadays in instruments we can actually have least counts of much much smaller than one millimeter now most of the modern scaled instruments provide digital display some of them actually which comes with a high degree of magnification now measurements can be made up to one micron accuracy a micron of course is uh, one divided by 10 to the power six of a millimeter now depth gauge is one of these scaled instruments a depth gauge is one of the scaled instruments and as we can see in the diagram provided the depth gauge consists of a head, like something like in a T-shaped or an inverted T if you like, a blade or sometimes a rod 
may also be used and a clamping screw now the depth gauge is the preferred instrument actually for measuring holes and grooves now it is it basically consists as we have just mentioned of a graduated rod or rule which can slide in a t-shaped head or sometimes called a stock now in front of us we can see two figures or two diagrams of uh, a depth gauge which one of them uses rod type the first one on the left and the second one which is on the right as you are viewing it uses a tape now the head is actually used to span or extend the shoulder of the recess thereby providing the reference point for the measurement this actually although it is the useful part of the uh, depth gauge it's, it represents also a limitation as you will come and see later on now the rod or the rule is pushed into the hole until it bottoms the screw clamp helps the lo in locking the rod or the rule in the head and then you can take the whole instrument and read the measurement as at your leisure as we explained earlier on now the depth gauge is then withdrawn and reading is recorded in a more conven convenient position now the depth gauge is useful for measuring inaccessible points in a simple and convenient manner because as you can see in the diagram shown here these sort of holes or recesses cannot be measured by using the simple rule which we are uh, using to measure anything which is in the open now the rule is often referred to as the blade and is usually 150 millimeters long the blade can actually can accurately read up to one or half a millimeter that is just like a simple rule the head is used to span the shoulder of a recess thereby providing the reference point for measurement as in the figures provided now although depth gauge provides an easy and convenient method for measuring depths of holes and recesses it has the following limitations now the first limitation is that the job size is limited by the width of the head okay and usually about 50 millimeters uh, diameter or hole can be measured by using a depth gauge anything which is higher than that is going to be difficult because the head is going to move inside the depth and it will not be able to provide us with the reference which we require now the second limitation is that the base of the head should be perpendicular to the line of measurement otherwise the line of measurement will be out of true readings or re resulting in erroneous or error in the reading the end of the plate must butt against the desired reference now this will be rather difficult to achieve especially in blind holes you just have to guess in that case now the end of the plate and the lower surface of the head are always in contact with the job this means these parts undergo wear and tear the instrument should be perpendicular checked for accuracy and replaced if the wear among one of uh, amounts to one graduation line of the instrument or higher of course now another linear measurement instrument is what we call the vernier instrument now this is a shape of what is usually referred to or a, an example of what we usually refer to as a vernier caliber or a vernier instrument now vernier instruments are being used for a very long period since nearly two centuries they have been in use as is perhaps known to a student a vernier scale provides a least count of up to 0 0.01 millimeters or less which extremely improves the measurement accuracy as we have seen earlier on the seal rule provides us a least count of 
one millimeters or half millimeter so here we can go as far as 0 0.01 millimeter as the least count for our bearing instrument it has become quite common in the modern industry to specify dimensional accuracy up to one micron meter or less as we have said earlier on the micron is 10 to the power minus 6 of a meter now it is the responsibility of an engineer to design and develop measuring instruments that can accurately measure up to such high levels of accuracy of the one micron meter now the principle of a vernier is shown here in front of us in this diagram where we have the main scale and the vernier scale now the vernier caliber comprises two scales the main scale and the vernier scale considering the scale shown in figure let us say that the main scale has graduations in millimeters up to a minimum division of one millimeter a vernier scale also has graduations having 10 equal divisions now in this example 10 vernier scale divisions equal nine main scale divisions uh, obviously the value of one vernier scale division is less than uh, one main scale division now in such a case where the main scale division is uh, the, sorry where the value of one vernier scale division is less than one main scale division we call the instrument forward vernier on the other side if 10 vernier scale divisions equal 11 main scale divisions then the value of one scale one vernier scale division is more than the, that of one main scale division and therefore we call this sort of device a backward vernier now we continue with a vernier instrument of vernier scale as shown in the figure blue now the calculation of the least count the minimum length of the thickness that we define the least count itself as the minimum length or the thickness that can be measured with the vernier scale and for a forward vernier shown in the figure below n vernier scale divisions are equal to n minus one main scale divisions or one vernier scale division is equal to n minus one over n main scale division now the least count is usually calculated by using the simple equation one main scale division minus one vernier scale division in the case of a forward vernier which we are considering at the moment therefore the least count is equal to one main scale minus uh, as we have shown earlier on the as we have shown at the beginning there the one main scale sorry the if we can take this pointer just to show as we have shown here one vernier scale division is equal to n minus one over m main scale division so if we substitute here then the least count is going to be equal to one main scale division minus n minus one over n multiplied by main scale division and the least count becomes if we take the main scale division outside the bracket n minus one over n one minus n minus one over n multiplied by main scale division this becomes one because n minus one over n becomes n minus one minus one that's going to be equal to one minus one minus one over n so this is going to give us one over n main scale division as the least count for the case of the forward vernier now the total reading in this case is given by the main scale reading plus the vernier reading coinciding with the main scale multiplied by the least count where msr is the main scale reading lc is the least uh, count and vc is the vernier matching or coinciding with the division of the main scale now referring to the figure below the fourth division of the vernier matches with one division of 
the main scale and the least count then is going to be equal to one main scale division over n as shown above which is equal to one millimeter divided by 10 is equal to 0.1 millimeters therefore total reading is going to be equal to one plus four times 0.1 which is equal to 1.4 now continue with the vernier caliber here we can see actually first at the bottom we have all the details of the component of which we refer to or the main parts of the vernier caliber now the vernier caliber consists of two main parts the main scale which is fixed on an l-shaped frame now this is the l-shaped frame starting from here and expanding up till to the depth measuring plate okay having the fixed jaw as you can see at the at the beginning here and having a scale shown by one two three four up to 15 okay and the vernier scale that can slide along the main scale this is the vernier scale and this can slide along the main scale and from here also comes the name of a sliding caliber because the vernier scale slides over the main scale now the sliding the the main scale is graduated in millimeters and it has a least count of one millimeter as we can see here and the vernier also has engraved graduations which is either a forward vernier or a backward vernier vernier as we explained earlier on now the vernier caliber is made usually of stainless steel or steel tool depending on the nature and severity of the application which we intend to use the caliber for now the main parts are shown here as we have just explained this is the l-shaped and that is the main frame and this is the vernier scale frame and we have the fixed jaw and the movable jaw which moves with the uh, vernier scale and clamping screws on top of the vernier scale and the fine adjustment clamp okay now the fine adjustment the fine adjustment is operated from this knob here as you turn it you either slide this forward or backward and these screws are used to clamp the uh, vernier scale plate vernier scale and the uh, the vernier scale and the fine adjustment clamp Now here we have also two of the examples of the application for the vernier caliber for outside and inside. Now the L-shaped mainframe serves as the fixed jaw as we have explained earlier on and the movable which also have which also has a vernier scale can slide over the entire length of the main scale which is engraved on the main frame or the beam now a clamping screw enables clamping of the movable jaws in a particular position after the jaws have been set accurately over the job being measured and then the reading can be taken at a leisure as we said earlier on in order to capture a dimension the operator has to open out the two jaws sufficiently for the job and slide the movable jaws uh, the movable jaw inwards until the two jaws are in firm contact with the job. Now, a fine adjustment screw enables the operator to accurately enclose the, po the portion of the job where the measurement is required by applying optimum clamping pressure. Now, the two jaws are shaped in such a manner that they can be used. They can be used to measure both external and internal okay now we can you you can see in figure a we are actually able to measure external dimension and in figure b we are able to measure internal 
dimension. Now, the following guidelines are useful for proper use of a vernier caliber. Clean, first of all, clean the vernier and the job properly and thoroughly. Because if you are talking about dimensions or least counts of 0 0.01 or 0 0.001 microns, then any amount of contaminants can actually uh, give us errors in the readings which you are taking. So cleaning is very important. When caliber jaws are fully closed, it should indicate zero. If it doesn't, then that means the caliber read or the instrument read to be need to be uh, recalibrated or repaired. Now we loosen the clamp screw and slide the movable jaw until the opening between the two jaws is slightly more than the intended job. And then we place the fixed jaw in contact with the reference point of the feature being measured and we align the beam of the caliper approximately with the line of measurement slide the movable jaw closer uh, to the feature and operate the fine adjustment screw to establish a light contact between the jaws and the job tighten the clamp screw on the movable jaw without disturbing the reading of course now remove the caliber and note down the reading in a comfortable position. Holding the graduations on the scale perpendicular to the line of sight. Now this is very important as we have explained at the beginning of, the, of our classes because otherwise what we refer to as parallax errors may occur. Repeat the measurement a couple of times so as to make sure that you are getting an accurate measurement. After completing the reading, loosen the clamp screw, open out the jaws, and clean and lubricate them. Okay? Now, always store the, the caliber in, in, in the instrument box provided. Avoid keeping the vernier caliber in the open for long durations, since it may be damaged by other objects or contaminants. Strictly adhere to the schedule of periodic calibration of the instrument. Now we go to another type of caliber. Although the first type of caliber which we have indicated is very, uh, the vernier caliber is very useful and very accurate for uh, linear measurements. Now it demands some basic mathematical skills. Now the problem with the basic vernier caliber which we have considered earlier on it demands some basic mathematical skills concerning the calculations involved for the main scale division and the coinciding divisions between the main scale and the, the vernier scale and the least count calculations. Now, all these require some mathematical skills in order to compute the measured value of a dimension. In addition, considerable care should be exercised in identifying the matching vernier division. These problems can be offset by using a dial calibre, caliber as shown in the diagram below here. Now, the components are similar to the previous components in addition to adding a dial in this case and a dial is being applied or supplied with zero setting button and a fine adjustment screw. Now, in a dial caliber, the reading can be directly taken from a dial gauge that is attached to the caliber as shown in the figure. And a dial caliber is more expensive, of course, than the ordinary vernier caliber, which we considered at the beginning of our today's class. Now, another type of caliber is what is known as electronic digital caliber. Now, this is the diagram or a figure of an electronic digital caliber. Instead of having a dial, in this, in this type, we have a digital uh, LCD display screen, okay? Now, an electronic digital caliber then uses a battery or it is a battery operated instrument that displays the results or the readings by using a liquid crystal display uh, screen, which what is known as an LCD. Now the digital display eliminates the need 
for calculations. All the problems which we mentioned earlier on regarding the calculations in the ordinary vernier caliber are actually being eliminated and it provides an easier way of taking readings as shown in the figure below. Now, the LCD display is turned on or off with a button. So we have a button in this case to turn the LCD display on or off in order to initialize the instrument the, the external yaws are brought together until they touch and the zero button is pressed to set the reading to zero. The digital cali caliber can now be used to measure a linear dimension. Some digital calibers can be switched between centimeters or millimeters and inches so you can use the same instrument in order to measure either in centimeters or millimeters or in inches digital calibers are made of stainless steel <coughs> excuse me and are generally available in three sizes ranging from 150 to 200 and 300 mm now the two greatest advantages of an electronic digital of an electronic digital caliber are electronic caliber functions or electronic calculator functions and capability uh, to be interfaced with a computer it can be set to either metric or british as we indicated earlier on and the floating zero option uh, allows any place within the scale range to be set to zero. Now, a digital display will then exhibit either plus or minus divisions of the jaw from the reference value. Now, let us consider some numerical examples. Example one, in a vernier caliber, the main scale reads in millimeters with the smallest count of 0.1 millimeter. 10 divisions on the vernier correspond to 9 divisions of the main scale and this as we explained earlier is known as a forward uh, vernier now determine the least count of the caliber solution one main scale division as given to us above is equal to 0.1 mm 10 vernier scale divisions are equal to 9 main scale divisions and the least count, as we indicated earlier in the lecture, is being calculated by one main scale division minus one vernier scale division, since this is a forward uh, vernier, is, which is equal to one main scale minus nine main scale, because 10, uh, because this is equal to one main scale minus one vernier scale, and one main scale is equal to the nine the ver 10 ver vernier scale divisions are equal to nine main scale so one vernier scale division is equal to nine upon 10 main scale divisions from this equation here which is equal to in total one upon 10 times 0.1 because the main scale is 0.1 and 10 over 9 over 10 or 1 minus 9 over 10 is equal to 1 over 10 so 1 over 10 multiplied by 0.1 mm which is equal to 0 0.01 and that means our least count in that example is 0 0.01 millimeters. Now let's consider another example where the main scale in a vernier instrument is graduated in millimeters with the smallest division being one millimeter. 10 divisions on the vernier scale correspond to nine divisions on the main scale. Now it is required to find the following. A, in the vernier scale, is the vernier scale, sorry, a forward or a backward, what is the least count of the instrument, and if the main scale reads 13 millimeters and the fifth division on the vernier scale coincides with the division on the main scale, what is the value of the dimension being measured? Now the solution, since the length of one main scale division is higher than the length of one vernier scale division, the scale is a forward vernier scale that is answer a 
B, least count, as we have shown earlier on for a four-word vernier is given by one main scale division minus one vernier scale division, which is equal to one minus nine over 10 main scale division, which is equal to 0.1, because in this case, our main scale division is one millimeter as shown in the example. The, di the dimension is, red is going to be equal to 13 plus five, uh, which is equal to 13.5 millimeters. Now, at the end here, I'm giving you a problem to solve, and I'm also giving you the answer for this problem. I hope you will solve it, and you will bring it to me uh, in the next class. Thank you very much, and I hope to see you next time.